Awesome. Get loud because we have a motto we say at Wayfinders. You ready? Wayfinders, follow the way. That's right. Wayfinders, follow the way. All the way. All the way. And that means we follow Jesus. He's the way. And we follow Jesus with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Follow the way all the way. Who is the way? Jesus. How do we know that? Let's see it. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So we're actually going to do a little treasure hunting this morning, and you're going to be looking for a key. The key is Jesus, but you're going to be looking for a key this morning is a good way to remember that. Very good. We're going to pray, and we're going to ask God to bless this morning so we can have fun, so we can learn about him and have lots of fun. I see some, some stuff here on stage. I wonder what all this is. I see, I see this thing. I don't know what that is, but we're going to find out. I think there's some fun stuff here. I think Rooster might have something planned for us for, for Wayfinders training this morning. So let's pray. So I need you guys to close your eyes. Okay, fold your hands together. We're going to focus on God right now. Give him our respect. Lord Jesus, thank you for your church. Thank you for your people. Thank you for your love. Thank you for the Bible so that we can learn about you. Thank you for each and every one here, God. We're going to learn about being resourceful. And we're going to learn about using the things that you've given us, including our hands and our mouths, to tell others about Jesus. Thank you, God, that we could sing songs about you. We love you. Bless this morning, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So that's right. Let's see. We are learning about being resourceful. That's a big word. What does resourceful mean? Where's some of my old... In the back, Liam. Yeah, it means uh, helping, like when you help people, you can be resourceful to use, you, you got to use something. What's the definition of being resourceful? Shh, listen up. Using the things around you, including maybe the things that nobody wants. Did you know you can make a tower out of newspaper and cardboard? Maybe you guys even like have those things laying around the house, even egg cartons, and people just throw them away. So being resourceful sometimes is using the things that other people just throw away right? So we're going to learn about being resourceful. And I actually have a funny video about being resourceful. You ready? All right. my wayfinders demonstration today and I've burned my hands very badly. I was going to show them how to make trail scones today. Oh, I know they were looking so forward to it. Trail scones? Isn't that that biscuit thingy that you're always eating? Well, let me see your hands. Ouch. Yes, right there. Ouch. Yes, and those biscuit thingies are food staple for wayfinders. They were counting on me to do the demonstration today. Well, it's important to be resourceful. That means to use something that is available to you. I learned it from the Bible when God taught people like Gideon how to be resourceful. Though I'm not what we have available to help, if only someone were here to lend a hand. Hmm, lend a hand. Penelope, I do believe you're a genius. I'm not following. Perhaps you could do your demonstration. Hmm, well, oh, if you didn't mind demonstration, not exactly what I was thinking. I know the wayfinders are counting on me to do this, so I must go through with it. Besides, I, I need you to be available to help read off the ingredients. Hmm, now let's see what we're going to do. <gasps> I have an idea. Yeah, okay, okay, yeah. I will wait right here. <clears throat> Uncle Rooster needs a volunteer for, t for today's scheduled demonstration. For you, sir. Okay. 
Okay, Wayfinders. Uncle Rooster had an accident getting ready, and it is, and he is a little bit nervous coming out. When I count to three, we're all going to yell our nice motto li really loud. Ready? Wayfinders, follow the way. All the way. Yes, very good, Wayfinders. All the way. All the way. Everything is fine. Nothing is out of the ordinary. Yes. Let me see. We have a demonstration today to make trail scones. Now, trail scones are a staple, something that every wayfinder should have. And I'm going to give you a demonstration on how to properly prepare trail scones. My Penelope over there. Yes, let me see. Hmm. I'm going to, yes, get ready. I have a few items here on this counter. We have some eggs and things like that. So I am going to show you how to properly prepare trail scones. Why Penelope here reads off the ingredients and tells us how to do it. Does that sound good, Penelope? Yes. I'm all ready. Let me crack my fingers, make sure everything's ready. Yes, very good. Yes, make sure. Very good. Okay, I'm very, I'm ready. Yes, I feel okay. ready. Step one, open the container of eggs. Open the container of eggs. Yes, I love opening eggs. I have four eggs in my container. How many do I need? Then you need to remove two, one at a time, crack mm -hmm. them on the bowl. Okay, yes, first egg, very good. Making trail scones, you need eggs. Yes, you crack them. Yes, very good, put them back. I want to be quite tidy, yes, yes. Oh, I seem to have a little trouble. Yes, very good, finally you have the egg. Excellent, And I'm then quite well, quite well. Now you yes, need to whisk egg. the eggs briskly. Whisk. So to whisk the eggs, I'm going to need a whisk. Hold up that whisk there. That'll be good. Yes, I'm going to hold that up and show you what a whisk is. And then I'm going to whisk it. Ah, oh, that's a lovely sound. I just love whisking eggs. Isn't it delightful? Don't you enjoy whisking eggs, Wayfinders? Yes, this is... Oh, oh, oh my. Um, now this is... Yes. So first step of how to prepare trail scones is, is whisking your eggs. And wipe off my hands there. Very good. Yes. Step two, find a container of special scone flour and add the mix to the bowl. Special scone flour. Now, yes, yes, I know exactly where that is. It has a top. I'm going to pop the top Be off. Be careful there. not to spill any because it can be highly explosive. What? what? Pe Penelope, w w what was that last line? Uh, you don't want to spill any because you could set the whole place on fire? Highly explosive ingredients? Penelope, this is proper. Oh, okay, don't... don't. Spill a bit. We have to be very careful. Oh my goodness. Careful. Careful. Uh, we, oh, I'm, I'm a little clumsy. I'm a little clumsy. Let's bring some things. Yes, very good. Step three. Measure out exactly one cup of water to the mix. Yes. Exactly one cup mm -hmm. and not a drop, drop more. No, this is, yes, no. Yes, I will try very hard not to spill a drop. Yes, adding to the mix. Adding the water without spilling any without spilling any yes. slowly pour it in and mix the bowl and stir the ingredients together with your hands with my what y with your hands yeah yes i suppose that is being resourceful very good all right yes yeah, so i'll mix the mix with my hands oh that feels delightful yes yes and i will show the wayfinders what my hands look like look at this yes yes very good yes we put that on there step oh, four sorry oh yes we got the it's a very important step hands. Wait, what, what was that? Step four. It's a very important step. Okay, very important step. I'm going to... Because listen. this in includes the secret ingredient, which, which holds the scones together. Ah, the secret ingredient. Carefully pour a small amount of craft glue into the mix. Just a small amount. What? All right, let's find the craft glue. Yes, very good. Yeah, somebody had some craft glue just waiting. How convenient. Yes. Just a drop of craft glue. Is it open there? Yes, very good. Just, just a drop of craft glue. Just a little, well, hmm. Yes, I guess I suppose it comes out kind of quickly, doesn't it? Oh, that looks yummy. Just delicious. Step five. Should, should we mix this? Yes, you're going to mix it with your hands again and taste. Yes. I suppose it is important to taste everything that you prepare. Especially things that you prepare with your hands. Let me see here. Mm. Mm. Step I got a, six. Wait, wait a moment. I got a little on the kernel. Let's try that again. Let me see. Make sure I don't. Make sure. Yes. All right. A little on the kernel. <laughs> ah, trail scones are just quite delicious. Splendid. Splendid. Yes. I'm sorry. All right. Step six. 
Add a pinch of salt to flavor and stir again. Okay, yes. Yeah, so let's see. Go ahead and get the salt. Huh? And we need a salt and add that to just a pinch, you said? Just a pinch. Just a pinch. What? Oh, my. Oh. These are going to be a little bit salty, I do believe. Let's see. Uh, and I, I, I believe I dropped the, the lid for that. Let me see that. Yes. Hi, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. The toss that aside. Very good. What was the next step? We added some salt. Step seven. Empty the mix into a small bag and mash together with a hammer to enclose all ingredients are combined. Are you sure these are the right steps? Well, that's what you okay, have. Yes. Yeah, so, okay. Let's grab the bag there. Let's see. I'm going to grab this bag and I'm going to open it with my wet, dirty hands. I can wipe them off. I, I, I think I'll wipe off my hands there so I can use them. Yes, very good. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to pour the contents of the bowl into, into the, the bag. bag. Excellent. I've done quite well. Yes. Not dropping any. Now, now let me see. I'm going to make some room on my cart here. I'm going to move the special ingredient flour out of the way. I'm going to push that forward. Yes. I'm going to move that. Very good. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then you need to mash it together with a hammer to to make sure all the ingredients are mixed. Do you have your hammer? I do. I do have a hammer. Are you sure this is the steps for trail scones? Did I give you the right recipe? I think so. All right. Well, this is the right recipe. So I'm going to smash this bag. Yes. Yeah, so we're going to making trail scones. Oh my goodness. Yes. You have to be careful when your hands are wet. You can <coughs> slip and lose your tools. It tends to happen. Make sure you're not in a splash zone. Very good. Yes. And it also says, if you have prepared them correctly, you should not have any ingredients on your face or your apron. Oh. I must have forgotten that step. Let me see. Yes. Now, let me make sure we've made them properly. Reach down in the bag there. We're going to reach down in this bag. Make sure. Yes. I'm going to reach down. Would anyone like to try my trail scones? No. Are you sure? They're quite delicious. Full of salt. Let me make sure our salt content is correct. We're going to reach down in the bag there. We're going to make sure, and we're going to make sure we get a good handful, because you want to make sure you get the right amount of trail scone mix. Yes, and you get, yes. Mm -hmm. <coughs> yes. Oh, it's just delicious. Just delicious. Yes, very good. Now, that is how you properly prepare trail scones wayfinders. They are a staple, very important indeed. I hope you've paid attention. Very good. Now, if you'll excuse me, Penelope, I'm going to go behind that tree and cry. Thanks for the demonstration, Uncle Rooster. Yes. And let's give our hand to our brave volunteer who helped us be resourceful. Wait, 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 wait. Huh. Being resourceful. I think I'll write that down. Very good. What was the next step? We added step, some salt. Step seven. Empty the mix into a small bag and mash together with a hammer to enclose all ingredients are combined. Are you sure these are the right steps? Well, that's what you okay, have. Yes. Yeah, so, okay. Let's grab the bag there. Let's see. I'm going to grab this bag and I'm going to open it with my wet, dirty hands. I can wipe them off. I, I, I think I'll wipe off my hands there so I can use them. Yes. Very good. Excellent. Mm-hmm. Now I'm going to pour the contents of the bowl into, into the, bag. the bag. Excellent. I've done quite well. Yes. Not dropping any. Now Let me see. I'm going to make some room on my cart here. I'm going to move the special ingredient flour out of the way. I'm going to push that forward. Yes. I'm going to move that. Very good. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then you need to mash it together with a hammer to, to make sure all the ingredients are mixed. Do you have your hammer? I do, I do have a hammer. Are you sure this is the steps for trail scones? Did I give you the right recipe? I think so. All right, well, this is the right recipe. So we're going to smash this bag. Yes, yeah, so we're going to make in trail scones. Oh, my goodness, yes. You have to be careful when your hands are wet. You can <coughs> slip and lose your tools. It tends to happen. Make sure you're not in a splash zone. Very good. Yes. And it also says, if you have prepared them correctly, you should not have any ingredients on your face or your apron. Oh. I must have forgotten that step. Let me see. Yes. Now, let me make sure we've made them properly. Reach down in the bag there. We're going to reach down in this bag. Make sure. Yes. I'm going to reach down. 
Would anyone like to try my trail scones? No! Are you sure? They're quite delicious. Full of salt. Let me make sure our salt content is correct. We're going to reach down in the bag there. We're gonna make sure, and we're going to make sure we get a good handful, because you want to make sure you get the right amount of trail scone mix. Yes, and you get... Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Oh, it's just delicious. Just delicious. Yes, yeah, very good. Now, that is how you properly prepare trail scones wayfinders. They are a staple, very important indeed. I hope you've paid attention. Very good. Now, if you'll excuse me, Penelope, I'm going to go behind that tree and cry. Thanks for the demonstration, Uncle Rooster. Yes. And let's give our hand to our brave volunteer who helped us be resourceful. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> huh. Being resourceful. I think I'll write that down. Adventure Journal, day 124. I don't want to waste the resources God has given me. I have my compass, God's word, to show me where to go. I have prayer allowing me to talk to God anytime, anywhere. I have my guide, the Holy Spirit, who helps point out traps ahead and teaches me how to go on this adventure. And I have Jesus, the one who died to take the punishment for my sins. Lord, help me be resourceful like Gideon from the Bible and use the things you have given me to show Uncle Rooster and others your kingdom. It is the treasure that I seek. Wayfinders, follow the way, all the way. Jesus is the way. I better make sure Uncle Rooster is okay. He seemed pretty upset after that demonstration. It's an amazing place. I hope to visit there someday. Has anyone been to Canada? You have? Yeah? Did you like it? Was it really neat? I, I'm, I can't wait to go there. I think it'd be really neat. Someday, hopefully, I get an opportunity to go to Canada. The neat thing about being on God's adventure, right? Because God has adventure for each and every one of you. It's your adventure that he gives you, and you don't know where it may take you. Part of your adventure may be someday to go to Canada and tell people about Jesus. So as a wayfinder, if you're trying to help people follow the way and follow Jesus, you need to know how to use things around you, how to be resourceful. So let's take a look again at what we're learning about this week. Be resourceful. And that means to use the things around you that are available and use them in a practical way, in a helpful way. And one of the ways we could help people is by telling them, telling them about Jesus. So let's go ahead. Does everybody have an adventure bag? Wayfinders, you have your adventure bag? No? Does anybody not have an adventure bag? One? Did you? Is yours out in the lobby in the cubbies? Run real quick. Yours is in the, in the cubbies. Quick like a bunny. How many do we need? Do we need, do we need adventure bags? Well, in your bag should be a Bible, or have you brought your compass, have you brought your Bible from home? If you have a Bible, go ahead and take it out. Let me see it. Very good. Very good. If you have a Bible, hold it up. Let me see your compass. Very good. Excellent. I'm seeing compasses over here. I see one there. Very good, Maddie. In the back, I see two. Good job. Fifth and sixth graders. Excellent. Compass, hold them up nice and high, koala bears. Let me see. Very good. Excellent. We're going to go ahead and set our compass. Let's go ahead and set our compass. That means we're going to open our Bibles to a verse. Let's see what our verse is. Get ready to set your compass. Philippians 4.13. Wayfinders, find me Philippians 4.13.
And if you don't have your Bible, if you don't have your compass with you, it's okay, because we're actually going to put the verse up on the screen. But can someone stand up and read me Philippians 4.13? Go ahead. You know it from memory. That's awesome. Stand up. Turn around. Face away, finders. Listen up, everybody. Listen real close. Stand up. Turn around so they can hear you. Shh. Wayfinders, listen. Nice and loud. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. I am able, same thing, to do all things through him who strengthens me. Let's read it, guys. I am able to do all things through him who strengthens me. Who strengthens me? God, that's right. God is the one who gives us strength, We're able to do all things. Being resourceful is being able to use the things that are around you. Now, let's see... If we can hear from the Holy Spirit, we have to listen, though. And I'm missing something. What do I need? I need my radio. Where's my radio? What's with all this plastic, anyways? What is all this stuff on stage? Hmm, that's not bad. Um, I need my radio. Why do we have a radio? Who are we listening for? The Holy Spirit. We're going to listen to our guide. You ready? All right, let's see if it works. This is an old radio. But you know what? Our guide really wants to talk to us, so let's see if we can... Let's see if we can... How's that? Does that work? Can everyone hear? All right, you ready? Is this facing everybody? Good. All right, hang on. Let's listen and see if we can hear for the Holy Spirit. Listen. Calling all wayfinders, this is your guide speaking. I've gone ahead of you to look for any snares or traps that you may encounter. I'm here to help you on the great adventure God has for your lives. Now, listen closely. Being resourceful means to find value in things that others often throw away or ignore. As a wayfinder, you can follow the example of Jesus and value people that the world throws away. Oh, hang on. Let's see if we can get him back. Be on the lookout for those in your school or community that no one wants to talk to or sit next to. That is a person that others are ignoring, but that Jesus loves very much. Be resourceful and use what God has given you to love that person. You can spend time with them, share your hobbies with them, pray with them, and also use your compass to point them to Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life. Wayfinders, follow the way. All follow the way. way. All right. It's an old radio, but I'm glad it still works. So what did our guide tell us? We have to what? Yeah, so if there's somebody in school that nobody else is sitting next to and nobody else is talking to, do you have something available to you that you can use and be resourceful to love that person? The Holy Spirit gave us some ideas. What are some ways we can love someone? You can let them sit next to you. Maybe you can share something at lunch. What do you do at lunchtime? You eat. And sometimes the school gives you a lunch or you bring a lunch with you. If you have some food with you, maybe you can sit down and say, hey, do you like granola bars? Maybe you can have, you can have my granola bar. That's a great way to love somebody, and that's using the resources that you have. So sharing your lunch, sitting next to them, maybe talking with them. So we're going to learn this morning about being resourceful, and I have something, and I think I need your help. Give me a moment. It's a little bit big. Kind of clunky. I think it's back here. Hang on. Oh, man, this thing is big. Oh. Oh. Whoa. Whoa. What? Is this is. Whoa. 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 This thing is heavy. Whoa. 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 Okay. Wow. This is. Do I have it on right? Oh. This is heavy. This is my backpack. Check it out. What do you think of that? 
See if you got wheels on it, right? Spinners. Right? So if I walk up to a traffic light, I'm like, hey, want to race? What do you think of that? This is my adventure pack. This is my backpack. So when you use a backpack, sometimes where are you going? On an adventure, yeah. Sometimes you guys go to school, you carry a backpack. If you go to school with a backpack, what goes in your backpack sometimes if you're going to school? What is it? Stuff that you need. So like, what are the resources you need at school? Pencils, that's a good resource. What do you do with the pencils? You write on paper, you need paper. What else do you need? Pens and erasers, in case you make a mistake on your paper. What else? Something that opens up. A book. You need books. What else? Sometimes you carry water. When you're going on adventures, you need a compass. You need a compass. Cameron, what else do you need to carry in your backpack? Lunch. That's great. You need to have food. So if you're going on adventure, if you're, yeah? I have a compass. A compass is good to have if you're going on adventure. So that's something you need on adventure. A compass. How about something to start a fire if you need to be able to cook your food? What else would you carry in an adventure backpack? What is it? Wood. Maybe you wouldn't carry some wood around to make sure you have dry wood. Matches. That's good. Yes. What would you need on an adventure? Your compass. We said that one. How about something that helps you know where you're going? Do you remember something like on a piece of paper to... Shows you your yeah, map, that's right. So let me show you what's in my backpack and you can help me decide one thing. Is it something that I can use to tell others about Jesus? And I, it's been a while since I've opened this backpack. I'm not even sure what's in here anymore. So maybe you guys can help me out. Ugh, it's heavy though. Watch out, I don't wanna drop this on you. Watch out, I don't wanna, I don't wanna drop it on you. Watch out, watch out, watch out. I don't wanna drop it. I don't want to drop it. Watch out. Wow, it's really heavy. Hang on. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. All right, so let me see. What's in my backpack here? This is a nice, rigid backpack. First things first in the adventure backpack. Maybe you guys can help me out. Wait a minute. Hmm. Can you hear that? What is this? Oh, I know what this is. Let's see if I can get it to work. Oh, hang on. Get on. Oh, the batteries are dying. I need juice. I need juice. This is called a fun fly stick, and it actually uses something very simple. This is a little piece of metal, and it uses battery, which has died on me to actually let this float. And what it does is it pushes it up. So what it does is it uses something. All it is is a cardboard tube and some batteries, and it creates something called static. Static electricity will push this around. And if I let go, it stops and it floats down. And it gives it a charge, which, which allows it to kind of push up. So can I use this to tell someone about Jesus? Yes, I hear some yeses, I hear some noes. For those of you who said yes, how would I use this to tell people about Jesus? Sarah. You can go like, uh, you can send a message. Shh, listen, listen. Going on an errand would make it float up like Jesus and going up to heaven? That's a wonderful idea. That's a great idea. You can, you can talk about how Jesus ascended from the earth into heaven, how he is at the right hand of the Father, and it floats up. Also, you could talk about how God created the world to work a certain way, how he designed the world. He created the world, and he created electricity, static electricity that works like that. So that's a really neat way of maybe teaching somebody, tell them about Jesus. Let me see what else I have. I need a volunteer. Oh, uh, in, in the, the dress, the purple dress, I'm sorry. I didn't, come on up. All right, face everyone. But come closely. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. All right. Reach inside. Feel something fuzzy. No, that's not fuzzy. Ooh, is that fuzzy? <laughs> Pull it out. Turn it around. Turn it around. Ah! 
No one move. That scared me. You scared me. You jumped and I jumped. Whew. Thank you very much. Would you like to touch it again? It's fair. Are you sure? Woo! I jumped again. All right, have a seat. Have a seat. Thank you. Give her a hand. Give her a hand. That was very brave. This is my little friend, Spider, and he keeps uh, losing his legs. How many legs does he have? Uh, one, two, three, four. Four plus two? Six. Six legs. Wait a minute. That's not right. An insect has six legs. Three on each side, right? Is that right? A true insect has six legs? So is a spider, is a spider an insect? No. Hmm. How many legs should it have then? Eight. Eight legs. Very good. Eight legs. So it's missing a couple legs. This one looks like it's been in the backpack for a while. I hope I don't find its legs in there. <laughs> mm. So a, a spider should have eight legs. Can a spider help me tell others about Jesus? Yeah. Over here. Yeah. How, how would I tell someone about Jesus using a spider? That's a great idea. Plus, what do spiders make? Every night they make something. Every night. A big web. Have you ever walked outside and saw the spider web hanging, hanging by something? A big one? Well, listen. What about if I'm going to tell somebody about Jesus, maybe I could talk about how Satan is trying to spin a web to trap people in it, to trap them in sin, to deceive them, to lie to them. And that's like getting stuck in a web and you can't get out. Once you get in that web and you get stuck, Jesus comes to free us from a web, right? So if, if, if Satan's a spider and he's trying to catch you, Jesus is like, hey, I'm going to free you from the web. Also, God created spiders. They're fearfully and wonderfully made. This is an awesome thing. It's got eight legs. It's really cool. Kind of furry. They get really, they get this big. We can tell God, we can tell others about Jesus using a spider. Let me see what else I have. Some old spoons. I guess an adventure backpack has old spoons. How would you use old spoons to tell others about Jesus? Right here. Right down in front. You can like make a meal and then like. I love it. Keep going. Make a meal and feed the homeless. That's awesome. Great suggestion. You could feed others. You could make some soup. You could stir it up and you could feed others with that. That is fantastic. Uh-huh. Do you know what this is? I will give you a million points if you can guess what this is. Kind of furry. It is. So, so that's a good observation. Strap with holes. Kind of furry. What does it feel like? What do you think this is? Some of you have maybe never seen this before. Do you know? This might be the first time you've ever seen one of these. It's really something special. This is called a finger beard. I don't know. I just made that up. I have no idea what this is. But I think it could work as a finger beard. So go home, find a furry piece of material, cut a hole in it, and make a finger beard. And walk around your house and just follow your parents like this. And they'll be like, what are you doing? And you'll be like, finger beard. I learned it at Wayfinders. Would anyone like to hold the finger beard? No? Would you like to hold it? Very good. Can you use a finger beard to tell people about Jesus? You can. Actually, let me show you one more time. Let me show you how to tell others using a finger beard. Ready? Listen. He's very special. Jesus loves you. <laughs> Did you hear it? Finger beard is awesome. Finger beard is awesome. You want to hold that? Oh, awesome. All right. Ooh, something that should be in every adventure pack. Ooh. I'm looking for a Bible verse that has to do with this. Does somebody know? Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. So if I need to see my way through here, my lantern. Now, does the lantern show you the whole way ahead on your adventure? Does the lantern show you everything around the corner? No, it only shows this little bit of light. So the Bible is a lantern unto my feet. What that means is it's always showing us just the next step to take, the next step to take.